Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills and get lost in creativity. What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Let's just get right into it, and we start with more new features revealed from the latest iOS 14.5 beta. Now, we talked about the big ones in the last video, but these ones are just as important, and it just shows that iOS 14.5 is going to be more than a little upgrade. Now, in the current beta, at least the way it is now, you can change your default music app in iOS 14.5. So that means if you use Spotify like I do or Pandora or others, you can ask Siri to play music from a specific artist and it will prompt you for which app that you would like to use as the default. Then you can choose your preferred music app to make the default. And this is different from what you can currently do by directly telling Siri what supported music service you wanna use. So when you ask it something specifically like, hey blank, play songs from BTS on Spotify, that works now. But at the moment, there are no manual settings to make this default music app change in iOS 14.5, which is something that to me should be added if it's an option. And it's early on still, but this is a sign that Apple Music might not have to be your default music app on the iPhone anymore. Now, I've also talked about how Apple Maps is just really a legit map service and has completely shed the ghosts of its past. Well, iOS 14.5 beta is showing us another reason to potentially make it your go-to maps app. Now, a new feature will let you report accidents, hazards, or speed checks along your trip while getting directions. You can also tell Siri directly that there's an accident or hazard or speed check without even touching your phone. Adding features like this just levels up their maps and it takes features that we're accustomed to from Waze, but then bringing a lot cleaner interface to it. And I really think that's gonna help bring some people over to Apple Maps. And another feature that might be coming back YouTube's website brings the picture in picture player to work once again in the iOS 14.5 beta. Now you won't be able to do this in the standalone YouTube app. And this was originally in iOS 14, but then YouTube nixed the features unless you were logged in as a YouTube premium subscriber. So as of now, the YouTube picture in picture feature is back in the iOS 14.5 beta if you're watching through a browser, but there's a strong chance that they will move back to disabling support for it once iOS 14.5 goes live to the general public. You know, the dedicated YouTube app, it doesn't support picture in picture, even though it really has the capability to do so in iOS 14 if they wanted it to, because, you know, YouTube really wants you to just stay in their app as long as possible. Now, there's also another important under the hood change, maybe not as sexy, but iOS 14.5 is now directing safe browsing traffic in Safari through Apple servers instead of Google's to help limit what personal data Google sees about its users. So behind the scenes when you're browsing the web, Apple works with Google and their safe browsing database and blacklist. This is websites that Google detects to be suspected of phishing or scams. Now Safari checks the website you're visiting against that list before it warns you. Google won't ever know what specific URL you're trying to visit, but it may collect your IP address during the process with Safari. So with this new change, it will no longer do that and Apple will proxy the Google safe browsing feature through its own servers to limit any risk of an information leak. And I know that this is stuff you would likely never seek out, but now that you hear about it, you're probably thinking, oh, okay, I like that. I mean, I do. Now, Apple continues to take its strong stance on privacy. We'll also see a whole lot more with their new requirement for app tracking transparency that will ask iOS users for their permission before being tracked across apps and other websites. And there's a reason that Facebook isn't too happy about it. So those are the new things that have been discovered in the latest iOS 14.5 beta, which will run on iPhones that currently support iOS 14. And we know that the iPhone is always gonna really be their bread and butter, making up almost 60% of the revenue. But remember, there was just so much talk about the iPhone 12 mini, and we know that reviewers were raving about it, and it still is a great phone, but it's easy to say that when you're given a review models, but what are you actually buying for yourself to be your daily driver? Well, according to data firm CounterPoint Research, the iPhone 12 mini accounted for just 5% of total sales for Apple in January, and according to JP Morgan, phones with screens under six inches now account only for 10% of smartphones sold industry-wide. There's other analytics outlets out there like Wave 7 Research and Flurry Analytics who also reported sales around five to 6%. And Flurry Analytics called it the least successful iPhone launch in the past three years. So 
is the iPhone 12 mini a flop? Okay, calm down. Calm down before y'all get pissy and mad at me. I'm not saying the iPhone 12 mini is a bad phone, but the consumers ultimately decide and it hasn't been the sales success that people expected it to be. Now I have to imagine that we look at the iPhone SE 2020, that was maybe a phone that preemptively took a chunk of those sales out before the mini even came out. That's really a phone for that specific user, loves the smaller size form factor and then the physical button. But when it came to a similar size with more advanced features and no touch ID button, a majority of people decided to go for a bigger screen iPhone. Plus you have to remember the mini came out later. So some people didn't even want to wait and they just got a 12 or 12 pro instead. Now, Apple, they don't release sales numbers. So we don't know exactly how many 12 minis they actually sold, but there was just so much hype and energy from social media and tech reviewers that clearly did not match the overall sales numbers. Now I love the mini for its one handed use, but it wasn't the phone that I was going to make as my daily driver. So, for fun, I put up a poll on my Twitter and my followers tend to be overall tech lovers that are tech savvy. Many of them are really like deep in the ecosystem and I'm really talking to you all watching. But with over 900 respondents, the 12 Pro Max led with 46.6%. The 12 Pro came in at 29.4%. The mini was third with 12.3% and then the iPhone 12 came in last at 11.8%. And my poll, it doesn't factor in all the other iPhone models that were on sale because not everyone bought an iPhone 12, but you can see the full breakdown here, at least, you know, give you a better idea based on consumer intelligence research partners, their numbers back in October to November of 2020, that was during the launch window to see the entire mix of total iPhone sales. And that also included as far back as the eight and eight plus the iPhone 12 mini sales are the deep purple on the far right. And they only make up about 5% there too. The latest rumor reports still claim that we will see the same four size screens for the iPhone 13 lineup or, you know, whatever it ends up being called. But I felt like the 12 mini might give us a sign that a smaller screen phone could be making a comeback. And if anyone can push a tech trend, it's Apple. But that just wasn't the case in 2020, unless things somehow change with this year's iPhone mix. And if they don't, I would not be surprised if they took it out of the lineup after 2021. Because for me though, the bigger question is how many units sold is represented by five to 6% because Apple surely won't tell us, but that would be a real big indicator if it has a long-term future in this lineup. So look, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the 12 mini. Was it a novelty for you or does Apple need to keep it in their mix? Let's say, why did you get it? Or why did you pass on it? Hey, put it all in the comments and you know that Apple Bits Nation, they're gonna respond plus there's a higher chance that I'll read it if you use an emoji in it. All right, the rumors have cooled off some with Apple's AR VR glasses after we heard about the reported starting price of $3,000 for a first generation model. That is not targeting the general consumer with that price point, really. It's more for developers to get their hands on them, but here's what you all had to say about them. Kevy Kev said, three G's is more than my 97 CRV, but it's got a cassette player and all wheel drive. Good point, Kevy Kev. Sean o says, I would pay about tree 50 for a VR headset. I think he meant 50 trees. Now, Luis Juarez says, yes, I would buy it for $3,000. I'm hooked on Apple. Well, you know, that makes one of you or eight of you if you add the seven likes. And Arjun Ambernath chimed in with, Brian, you really need to improve your humor. <laughs> All right, take a look at these renders from Antonio De Rosa that took the original sketch and it imagines what Apple's first headset might look like in real life. You know, we've got some big time inspiration from Ready Player One. It's always fun to see this stuff, but we'll actually wait and see what the products end up looking like. Now, the reported earliest time we could see it has been targeted for some time in 2022. Now, the latest report from Nikkei says Apple has partnered with Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company to develop what's described as ultra advanced micro LED displays to be specifically used in upcoming augmented reality devices. TSMC is the same company that manufactures the A series chip for mobile devices and then the M1 Apple Silicon chips. Micro LED is that next generation of display tech that is still yet to really take hold in the mainstream TV market. Although Samsung is targeting this year to push out their first micro LED TV displays. Now micro LED has the same benefits as OLED, but is even slimmer, thinner, 
more power efficient without the potential long-term decay or burn-in. It would make sense for Apple to explore this tech for the rumored sleeker augmented reality glasses that they're targeting 2023 at the earliest. Okay, you want something that's gonna make you smile? Yeah? Well, my bro-in-law, he posted this genius video from the YouTube channel Maytree. This is a Korean acapella group that did a video performing some of the iPhone's most recognizable ringtones and sound effects. You gotta take a listen. Oh, it is so good. That just makes me so happy. I mean, that is just part of it. So check out the whole thing, but this is an easy one. That's a good apple. Yeah! All right, thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Now there's so many topics with classes that speak specifically to me like graphic design because those YouTube stills, they don't make themselves. And then film and video to continue to improve my skills because from year one to almost year three, I've been able to see the difference in my own work. I'm an independent creator and there are times where I hit roadblocks. So I checked out this class called Productivity for Creatives. It's a Skillshare original taught by Thomas Frank that helps streamline my process and give me tips to be more efficient while still not losing that creative spirit. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. This is a service that I genuinely use and there's no better time than now to follow a passion and develop new creative tools for yourself. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Don't wait, check out Skillshare today. Okay, everyone, that's gonna do it for this video. If you like what you see, you know what to do. Give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell ding to get all my videos when they drop. And if you want more Apple goodness, you can check out my Apple Bits XL audio podcast to get the latest deep dive with all these stories and new ones every week with special guests. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care and be safe. Peace and love.